Ashanti is pregnant. Hey, she's having a baby. Hey, whoa. These diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear. Uh huh. Big ol' raindrops up in my ear. If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear. Jesse, woo! Chanel. If you're new here, make sure that you like, that you share, that you subscribe so you can join the Black Women's Tribe during Black Women's Eclipse Month. Um, what else is uh, this month? Someone in my comments said that uh, April's also uh, Autism Aware Awareness Month. Also, April is SA Awareness Month. So shout out to all my fellow survivors. You know, we survived it, child. We survived one of the most ugliest acts of violence that uh one person can expect to their bodies um what else uh ramadan month is over but still free palestine free haiti uh what else is talker max still selling y'all them ramadan dinners now that ramadan is over um my black ramadan people is he still selling ramadan dinners is he still like ramadan in or like did he pick you know a new cause to grift off of allegedly 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 allegedly, allegedly. 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 Okay. Um, what else, y'all? Okay, so before we get into this, okay, quick reminders. June, I'm going to Cartagena. Please, y'all, don't wait till the last minute. Like, some of y'all been emailing, asking questions. If you want to come with me to Cartagena, Colombia, please go to vocation.net, sign up, um, you know, pay the fees, and I will see you in Cartagena, Colombia. Please, please, please do not. Por favor, por favor, please do not wait to the last minute to get your tickets and to get yourself situated, okay? And I, I'm looking forward to seeing y'all in Cartagena, Colombia. Um, shout out to those of you guys who did sign up for my Ghana trip. Booked. Um, what else? I think that's it, y'all. How's y'all? How's y'all week been going? My week's been going good. Um, I saw my, <laughs> y'all, I, I really cannot believe I'm dating. Like, I really cannot believe, like, I'm dating someone right now. Okay. You know what? Am I becoming that girl that's talking about this too much? You know what it is? Let me say this and then, and then I'm not going to talk about him no more. But unless you're in my members only. If you're in my members only, I do have uh, my vlog dropping. Um, but you know what it is? I cannot believe like I, I, I'm dating somebody who is everything I really wanted and more. Like I think I was just at a point where I was starting to think, okay, this is just, maybe this is just not gonna happen. Maybe I just need to settle. Like I really was like just about to just settle for just being alone or just settle for like occasional dick. Like I was really just okay with just like the idea of going down to the clinic, picking out my baby father. <laughs> Picking up my baby father from a wall, and then like that's it, like and just doing this on my own, on my own. In um, the Haitian culture, we have a saying that says, "Oh, so you didn't, you didn't like that? Okay, my bad. What well, can I just say? The last thing I was gonna say? Yeah, well, not you sending down lightning as I'm." <laughs> Okay, Lord, I hear you loud and clear. Um, <laughs> in the Haitian culture, there's a saying that says, Se mamak fe piti. Se mamak fe piti. And what that means is, it is the mothers who have a child. Um, and basically, what the gist of that is, is it's like a proverb that just basically shines a light on the fact that mothers are the ones who do most of the parenting anyway. And um, one of my aunties, she was just like, she's 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 like, I just am happy that I'm experiencing a very good experience. Like, this is the best dating experience I've ever experienced for so many reasons. And I'm not going to like talk you guys' ear, ears off. But just 
the thoughtfulness, the intention behind the way like he courts me and he dates me, the communication, like one of the things I love about him. Okay, am I talking your ear off? Okay, I'm not going to be too long. But one of the things I love about dating Mr. Easter is from our first date, we've always had these like debriefs, like after every date. We have these debriefs and like he'll tell me like, you know, what he liked about the date, you know, what moments were his favorite. You know, he notices just little things I do, like how I dance when the food's coming and how I dance even harder when the food's good. Like he's like, I, he's like, I know when you really like your plate because you do this thing with your shoulders. Like, <laughs> you know, he notices these things about me. Like every day there's always a debrief and it's always positive. Like we're always just like, like just positively affirming each other. And it's always really, really good. And even if there's something that like, we've had really hard conversations very early on, but even in that, I love how even like when we have like hard conversations and we disagree, there's just, it's like, we, we do it so well. Like the communication, like it's communi it's, con it's communicating. I just have never had that before. I've always felt like I had to carry the communication in my relationships. And even though I'm not in a relationship, I just feel like, thank God, somebody who finally is open with communication. But he's told me that he had to go through a lot of therapy. He's been through therapy. Like he's worked on himself a lot. And I'm like, thank God I'm, I'm, I'm seeing someone who decided to do the work and I didn't have to come in and do the work for him and help and like, you know, pull him into therapy, and pull him into communication and pull him into, you know, can you date me? Can you actually court me? No, he's doing all the things. Like it is so amazing to just experience that. And I feel like if you're like me and you, you know, haven't had a lot of dating, exp well, I've dated, but I don't date often. But if you're like me and you haven't, you've had more bad dating experiences than good like when you experience a good one it's like thank god like i am so thankful so all right i won't talk your ears off anymore about mr easter like i'm just gonna zip it because some of y'all too be in the comments don't tell us nothing don't share nothing that's how relationships end and i really don't believe in that i don't believe that sharing your relationship online um like sharing that you're dating someone and sharing like you know, the positive stuff about this person. I don't think that that ends your relationship. I don't think that posting your significant other ends your relationship. I think that turning your relationship into content, I think that's when things can get very sticky. It is like now your content, your whole online identity is the fact that you're in a relationship with this person. And now you're like all your content is about this person and what you're doing with this person and this person breathing and this person, like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's when you get into a very sticky, icky situation when it comes to the internet and your relationship. And now that's something I'm not going to do. Um, Unless you mean my members only. <laughs> but even then, it's like, it's not going to be like, you know, like, you'll catch us going to brunch. You'll catch us going, you know, to dinner. But, like, I'm not going to share, like, intimate moments and intimate, like, details and all that. Like, I'm not going to do that. Um, but, yeah. I'm just very happy. I'm really happy. Like, can y'all see it? And it's not because I'm dating. It's, I mean, that's kind of part of it. But I'm just in a happy space. I'm in a happy space and I think that I got to this happy space on my own and then it invited this person into my life. So, all right, let's get into some more happiness, child. Let's talk about Ashanti and Nelly. Like, wow. Ashanti's having a baby. She's having a baby, 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 baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Baby, baby, baby. Oh my God. Like, I cannot believe Ashanti's pregnant. Like, I mean, we knew it. We knew. We knew. But obviously, she made her announcement today. And what I love about her announcement is it wasn't just an announcement, baby. It is an announcement that came with a coin, period. So when I looked at her baby announcement, I did go to the tag page. And she tagged Proof. 
So prove, uh, helping you reach your fertility goals on your terms, get actionable lab level hormone insights on your phone uh, from the comfort of your own home. Okay, cool. So I'm just, girl, you better, you better get your coin. Um, how old is Ashanti? Ashanti Shakoya Douglas is 43. Okay. Okay. I mean, I get that. 40s so obviously fertility obviously fertility is um gonna be a concern you know when you're in your 40s i mean let it be, let the truth be told they tell you when you're in your 30s especially if you black child you're in your 30s you might be giving birth to baby in a wheelchair that's the way they make it sound like you know it is for black women in our 30s um so i'm pretty sure you know that makes sense for her to have the fertility journey but Anyway, y'all, so she had an exclusive with Essence, and I want to go ahead and read the article. Shout out to Essence for getting this exclusive. See, this is what I like about Essence. Not all that Amanda Seal shit and the Ray Monte shit that I was seeing recently. No, this is what I like. So the exclusive, Ashanti and Nelly are expecting and engaged. <laughs> See, I'm happy about this because one of the things, one of the concerns for me, like I, we talked about like, Ashanti and Nelly spinning the block and I've 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 said it on my channel before this is really like that one celebrity instance of spinning the block that I'm like yes yes it just looks good on both of them they both look happy like they both look genuinely happy together Nelly was always somewhat mean mugging when he was with them, that other lady and them uh, and, the, and them other ladies who he wasted their time to be told because you definitely wasted that lady time how long was he with Miss Jackson like almost 10 years no marriage no engagement no children like that was a total waste of time and here he is at the tender age of 51 how old is Nelly hold on tender age of 49 years old Nelly is 49 years old he's turning 50 this year okay so at the tender age of 57 years old nelly finally decided that he wanted to settle down but you know what honestly um okay before i get into my thoughts let me read the exclusive the grammy winning singer talks to essence about expecting her first child with longtime love nelly who is officially her fiance um, the singer shared good news exclusively with Essence as is overjoyed and is overjoyed about not only having her first child, but also being engaged to her longtime love. This new year of my life is such a blessing of full of love and hope and anticipation. She says, motherhood is something that I have always looked forward to sharing this with my family, fiance and loyal fans who have been so supportive of my career is an ex amazing experience. The couple also told Essence exclusively that their co-owners of Prove. Oh, along with founder Amy Beckley, PhD, it's a diagnostics company that offers at-home tests that help individuals looking to conceive, make it happen faster and in a way that doesn't leave a large dent in their pockets. The medical grade tests help to bring to light the issues that can keep people from being able to conceive. Prove was featured in Ashanti's pregnancy announcement video, which is uh, which was also co-shared by Essence on Instagram. I know that's right. Period. So wait a minute. So she owns this. Oh. Oh. Ashanti Shakoya Douglas is taking it. Ashanti Shakoya Douglas is taking it. I think that is so brilliant. So, so, so brilliant. Uh, all this is part of a new chapter in the lives of the stars. As noted, this will be Ashanti's first shot and Nelly's fifth. He has a daughter, Chanel, a son, Cornell Jr., and adopted Sean and Sydney Thomas. Okay, I did, I did, I forgot he did adopt those two kids. Um, but what about the fifth child? The two children of his sister, Jackie. Okay, but what about the? So what? So where, where the fifth child at? They ain't, they, they, they did not detail the fifth child. Um, the couple reunited in 2023. Remember, they, they, they first got together in 2003. Like to see them do this spinning of the block. 21 years later and of course we talked about you know nelly being with other women he has five kids we we essence only acknowledged the first two so what 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 other what other child at and we acknowledge his 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 you know his niece and nephew but what what other child at okay we're gonna leave that alone um and ashanti has dated other people you know i remember her being with Flo Rida for a little minute I don't think she ever claimed him, but thank God, because he's another one that's 
probably going to be forever a bachelor too. He has a lot of, he has some baby mama issues too. Um, so how do we feel about this? How do we feel about this? Are we happy for Ashanti and Nelly? I will say I'm very excited. Very excited. Yeah, she's having a baby. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited during Black Women's Black Women's Eclipse Month for Ashanti. Okay, during Black Women's Black Women's Baby, 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 Black Women's Month. For, I'm, I'm very excited. Um, she's talked about it before that she does want to have a family. She said that before. And... I think a lot of us, some of us, well, a lot of us that were watching her spin the block with Nelly, I think the concern was, or is, is he going to marry her? Because spinning this block and it not resulting in a commitment from this man who is a commitment phobe by all accounts and from what we've seen, I think that that would be so horrible. Like what, what was the reason, you know? So it's great to know that he proposed to her and that they're engaged. I think for me, I'm just still like holding my breath. Like I want to see the wedding. I want to see the wedding. I want to see people marching out the aisle. I want to see the cutting of the cake. I want to see the hors d'oeuvres. I, I want to see the bride maids. I want to see the flower girls, the flower boys, the bring berries. I want to see it all go down. I need to see it. I, I would like to see it. I would like to see it. Monique voice. I would like to see it. You know, um, Ashanti deserves to be committed to. Ashanti is a treasure. You know what I'm saying? Like Grammy award winning artists, like, like literally like the early two thousands, she gave us hit after hit after hit. Okay. She was JLo's voice. All right. She Milli Vanilli for JLo. Okay. JLo, half of JLo's career was built off of Ashanti and Selena. Cantonia. Okay. All right. So this woman deserves all her flowers, not only for being a great artist, being a great example of what a good artist is. I mean, you never hear Ashanti's name in anything other than what's his name? He's probably somewhere crying. What, 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 what's the murder ink? What's the murder ink? Uh, uh, name guy, whatever. Whatever is it? What what what? What's it? What uh? Irv Gotti, child. Irv Gotti somewhere crying. Say we cry, cry, cry. We cry one together. Cause ain't nobody crying with you. You crying one together. Pour conto, I pray pour conto in a corner, in your little corner, in your own little chair. You can cry however you want to cry by yourself. Okay, all by yourself. All by yourself, baby. The rest of us are rejoicing. We having a party while your bitch ass is in a crime in a corner somewhere crying uh, over Ashanti. All right. Um, how do you guys feel? Like, do you feel like they're really gonna get married? Do y'all feel like we're really gonna see this happen? I'm excited for them, and I'm excited for them actually owning this fertility company. I did not know that. For them to be co-owners, so not only are they joining their lives, but they're doing like joint ventures, like. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So let me know your thoughts on that. All right, so let's go on to some more like baby, baby-ish news. So we know Halle Bailey and DDG, you know, she recently gave birth to their son. I think their son is like six months old, I think. No, she had the baby in December, December or November. So maybe five months. Okay, who knows? But the baby is cute, even though we've, I've never seen the baby's face, but the baby be speaking to DDG all the time. Like every time I see a video of DDG and this baby, the baby is like a baby genius. Like I think the last video I saw was him like saying something to the baby and he was like, okay, so you're gonna listen to daddy, okay? And the baby said, okay. Like it was crazy. Get right there, everybody wanna say hi to you. You gotta make sure you, you be, be nice to the director and the producer so you can get some minutes too, okay? <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> He said okay. <laughs> Daryl, he just said okay. Yeah, no you be talking, okay? Be extra nice. <sighs> then you and your mama can be in the movie together. You, he can be one of the kids, huh? Mm -hmm. You should he tell him. He probably could, actually. Like, let him just be do a little he cameo. He just be the on the set with me. <laughs> And you hear Helly, you hear Hallie in the background, like, what? Like, the baby be talking, like, I don't know. And every time I see footage of him and the baby and Hallie, they always look happy. Hallie 
when when you see her with DDG, like she is clearly in love with this man. Um, I just my thing is like you know I don't know this man. All I know is I'm either always seeing him like positively being around their baby and, and being a dad or embarrassing her like intentionally like I remember when she became the little mermaid and how he made a whole like song that came off as a diss when he was talking about you know her having to kiss her co-star or recently the whole Ruby Rose moment where he came forward and he said that he you know reached out to Ruby Rose to make Hallie mad screenshot that she posted to me DMing her okay um and you were dating uh Hallie at the time yeah, but we was like going through a really, really, really rough patch. And it was kind of, yeah. So yeah. I was just like, you know, being, being petty, you know, type shit. But I had no intention. Like I did it in front of her. I had no intentions of actually linking with Ruby, you know? Yeah. She's seen it. Like imagine you arguing with your girl or whatever, right? Yeah. And, you know, you get mad at her for something that, you know, you know, you, you're mad, right? And you're like, all right, I'm, since you, you know what I'm saying, I'm finna do this, watch this type shit. You know what I mean? Oh, so you actually showed her Yeah, like, it, like I feel like people thought that I was like, sneakingly like, oh, what you doing type shit. And that's mm -hmm. when she posted, I, I know what type of girl she is. I knew she was going, like, I wouldn't even mm. do that. That's just not like, Somebody that can, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've interviewed Ruby before. Yeah, she she cool. She cool. Cause I didn't try to tell people over and over, like, bro, it's not like that. Like, I yeah. did it in front of her. Like, you I mean, know, doing I it in front like of her though. Yeah, I feel like doing it in front of her is better than trying to sneak. Were you just trying to piss her off by showing? Yes, that's it. Like, just literally just. Trying <laughs> Was she to piss pissed you off when you did that? Yeah. <laughs> but, she, but she pissed me off too, you know? It's just like this man has like an embarrassment kink when it comes to Hallie. I feel like he just, he goes out of his way to embarrass this girl. And again, I don't know enough about this man, but most of the time when I see men who behave like this, it is due to jealousy. Like it is due to the success of their significant other making them insecure and thus making them jealous. Anyway, Love B. Scott reported that DDG uh, and Holly Bailey's fans are speculating that they split up. He said the speculation went into overdrive on Tuesday. Uh, just showing you guys really quick where I'm reading this from. This is from Love B. Scott. Um, he said that uh, the speculation went into overdrive on Tuesday after it was discovered that Bailey and her beau, real name, Daryl Dwayne Granberry Jr., were no longer following each other on Instagram. Furthermore, the duo appears to have removed most of their photos as a couple from their respective accounts. Adding to the speculation after her solo outing this past weekend, the Little Mermaid actress enjoyed Coachella without DDG, uh, taking to Instagram to cheer on her, her sister Chloe after she took the stage for an electric performance. Had the best time at Coachella last night, da -da 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 -da, whatever. Um, yeah, so this is not the first article I did see on this. I did see like other articles and then there are people saying that they are together. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is number one, I think that while they look like a beautiful family, I do feel a way about a man who would go out of his way to embarrass the mother of his child, the woman that he's in a relationship with, this way, the way DDG did with the whole Ruby Rose, Ruby, what's that? Ruby Woes? Ruby, the girl who was bent over, wishing everybody a happy Ramadan while she was bent over and putting her finger on her coochie, that girl. Um, but anyway, I bring this up because maybe I'm ignorant as someone who is not a mother. But what is up with couples breaking up almost immediately after having a child? What is up with couples immediately breaking up with each other after having a child? I always thought that having a baby together would bring a couple closer together. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't have any kids. I'm not married. Obviously, I'm not a mother. So I cannot really relate to this, but I noticed this thing that happens when 
two people get together, they seem like they're in love and, and then all of a sudden they have a baby and all of a sudden like they break up months later. Is it having a baby a time when a couple gets closer and gets stronger or am I wrong? I asked this question on threads because I saw the whole Halle Bailey and DDG thing on my threads. So I asked this question. I said, what's up with folks breaking up after a child is born? I struggle to understand it because I'm childless. I thought children would bring couples closer together. Here are some of the responses. <laughs> Na Evans, who is <laughs> Na Evans, who is um, executive producer at Wild Now. Hi, Niall. Love you, Niall. Um, he said it changes the relationship from love and lust into a workplace relationship. Now, I think the women, some of the women saw this and they were upset by the response. But then there were some people who were like, bingo. Like one girl said, bingo. Another girl said, LOL, a good way to put it. Another one said, wow, this is true. Never thought about it like that. And again, I struggle to understand this because I'm not a parent. I'm not a parent. I've never had a child. I've never even been pregnant. But I struggle with this because I've always imagined when I become a parent that my partner and I are going to be all hands on deck. It's going to be a moment where we have to rely on each other. And unfortunately, what I've seen a lot is that a lot of mothers are abandoned. Like after having a child, it's like they're in a constant state of doing everything by themselves. And I don't understand that. I also noticed that, you know, men just really don't have a lot of empathy and understanding and they don't have decency sometimes to stay home with the mother and help her fight the battles. Outside of going to work, obviously you have to go to work, you have to go, you know, you have to take care of the household. But I mean, coming home and just still expecting for the mother to operate as if she's the only one in the home with this child. You just moving on, you mosey, like the, the men just seem to just be very disconnected. So what is that? This other young lady said, children do not always bring you closer. A lot of women experience postpartum depression and or anxiety, and that can have a huge impact on the relationship, especially if you already have an emotional, immature partner. You also realize how your partner reacts in tough situations. Birthing a child and all the decisions that come afterwards really shows if you can work as a partnership or if you are just carrying dead weight. Ugh. Motherhood changes you on a molecular level. You aren't the same. Um, another woman said, uh, her name is like Valentine's Day. Most men leave because to be honest, they don't like the changes that come with having a child. And she put in quotations, like, yeah. Um, this other woman, she said, this woman's name, the visionary accountant. I have three children and I'm married. Children don't necessarily bring you closer. They actually test your relationship and can put strain and stress on it. I find that it's a true test as to whether you have a solid partnership or not. And I asked her, I said, well, thanks for sharing, but have there been any parts of parenthood that did bring you closer? And she said, absolutely. Seeing what our love created has us in awe daily. My husband is Haitian and I'm blackity black, black American. So there were things we agreed that we didn't want to bring into how we parent. Child. Uh, and so it, it made us great teammates and deepened our commitment. I love that man. My kids and I are quite lucky. Aww. I feel like I can relate because child, there are a lot of things at you know growing up Haitian that I do not want to bring into motherhood like one of the things I don't want to bring into motherhood I received very very brutal spankings like my my spankings were brutal like I still have marks on my body from different spankings and I can tell you which spankings they were and it's crazy because I remember one time watching Roots with my mother and, you know, Kunta Kinte got his foot chopped off and this lady was crying. Oh, my God. Hey, hey, hey. 
she over there crying. And I'm like, girl, you did all but cut my damn motherfucking feet off in the next room just earlier. Okay? You did everything but cut my motherfucking foot off, ma'am. And here you go crying for a fictional character? Really? Really? Talk about it. Hey, hey, I'm so sad. Hey, whoa. Girl. So yeah, I'm not going to be bringing them root style beatings into my household with my child, okay? Um, what else? Oh, this one, this one girl said this. I chuckled when Michelle Obama mentioned in an interview how she didn't like Barack for like the first 10 years of their marriage. The girls were clutching their pearls and I said, the ones who get it, get it. Everything you said is a full test. It is a full test. It's so true. Remember when Michelle said what she said about Barack? Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Okay, here it is. The Guardian. Okay, this is where I'm getting the, the article from. Um, Michelle Obama says she couldn't stand husband Barack for 10 years. Former first lady uh, says caring for their young daughters put strain on their marriage in Revolt TV interview. Ooh, Lord, was this when, when P. Diddy was still there? Pun intended. <laughs> okay, this is from December 2022. Former first lady Michelle Obama has said she couldn't stand her husband for a decade while the couple's children were young. In frank comments to the black news station Revolt TV last week, Obama, one of the most popular women in America, said that raising children had put strains on her three-decade marriage to Barack Obama, the U.S. president, for two four-year terms beginning in 2009. People think I'm being catty by saying this. It's like there were 10 years where I couldn't stand my husband. And guess when it happened? When those kids were little. For 10 years while trying to build our careers and, you know, worrying about school and who's doing what and who's doing this. I was like, ah, this isn't even, ugh, this isn't even. And guess what? Marriage isn't 50-50. Ever, ever. There are times I'm 70, he's 30. There are times he's 60, 40, but guess what? 10 years, we've been married 30. I would take 10 bad years over 30. It's just how you look at it. And people give up. Five years, I can't take it. Um, I mean, she does give perspective about raising kids. I think I wish I knew how they were able to resolve that but maybe it could just be as simple as the kids growing up maybe it just was that simple the kids growing up and being able to be self-dependent and that's when it took the strain out of their relationship i don't know but those of you guys who are mothers those of you guys who are mothers whether you are a single mother whether you are married whether you are in a relationship i'd love to hear your thoughts on you know what having kids does to a relationship and why you feel that so much strain gets put on it um while she's saying she feels people may think that she's being catty by this i think she was being nice because i think she was in a nutshell saying like yo like a lot of the burden was placed on me it's placed on me like i i'm having to you know we're it's just naturally child rearing tends to fall on the woman and I feel that a lot of men just put it all on the woman and, and that's what I'm noticing and then of course someone mentioned like women having to go through postpartum your body like you know my, my best my bestie cousin Danny she is in Canada but we we have been like joined at the hip since we were kids and since we were born and, you know, I'm looking at her. She has my niece, Kendra. And sometimes when I'm FaceTime, we're fa we FaceTime each other all the time. But sometimes we're on FaceTime and Kendra will just walk up to her and pull her titty out. And just, you know what I mean? Like, while we on FaceTime. And it's like, she's like, you know, like, your body as, your body isn't even yours anymore. Like, it's one thing to carry the child. Then it's like the child comes out and your body is still not yours until that child is done with your body. And I think that's just something that men will never understand and never have to deal with. So a lot of them just refuse to even try to understand. 
And a lot of them just don't know how to show grace and show empathy and put themselves in, in a woman's shoes and say, you know what? Let me take some of that load off of you. I think that's the bigger issue. That's the big problem a lot of times, which leads to couples just breaking up because the men don't like the changes. Like one, like somebody in the thread said, men don't like the changes that come with you having a child. It's not all about them anymore. Now it is the baby that we have a baby here. So no, I can't just, you know, stop everything I'm doing and go to the club with you. We got to find a babysitter. I can't just get up and leave and go travel with you. We got a baby. How do we, you know, how do we factor that in, you know? And some men just choose to quit. Okay, so continuing with the motherhood theme of this Jessica Buffet, Jessica Buffet, y'all. Jessica Buffet's episode. I wanted to talk about this clip that I found of Cam Newton and Jason Lee. And they were talking about the double standards between a man having a lot of kids with different uh, baby mamas and a woman having several kids. And here's what they said. The double standards yeah, yeah, aren't yeah, going, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. A man having multiple women, that's that nigga. A woman having multiple men, she a hoe. Hold on, he's that nigga until they have hella kids and then that nigga ain't shit because they don't take care of him. No, you can't uh, say that because most I'm, a pro I'm that. I'm that nigga mm -hmm. that you, <laughs> but I got multiple, I got a lot of kids. But you also, you also, even if you weren't as hands on, you have worked yourself in a way to where you've had a successful career and can be a provider. Sure. A lot of men that are dropping dick off ain't providing shit, but STDs, kids they don't want to take care of, and a lot of excuses for being a no shit nigga. So, wait, and that is every woman watching is in the background cooking, like, hold on, let me watch this show. Cause this nigga right here watching it ain't shit. A lot of them watching it right now, a lot of women I know right now, settle for it. No good, nothing ass, dropping dick off. Dick don't even work all the time, by the way. Ass nigga. But can I ask you But this? guess what? They got a cute little baby as an ornament to sit by a fireplace and take a picture for Instagram during Christmas. Fuck out of here. You know, I really struggle to understand this sometimes because I don't have any children. I've never been pregnant. Never had to abort. Like, I've never been in a situation where I got pregnant with a man. I've never given birth. I don't know what it is to be with child and have a child, okay? Um, I don't know what it is to want to have a child with someone who I don't see myself marrying, Um but I also know what it is like to have someone in your life that is love bombing you and asking you for children. And you look around and you're like, mm, something's not right because like you haven't exhibited anything for me to want to have children with you or for you to say that you want to have children with me. We haven't had any of those experiences. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to ask y'all like, Looking at Cam Newton's response to it, what do y'all think about that? Like, yes, Cam Newton is obviously a multimillionaire, a very successful football player. We know he has several kids. Um, he has, um, I, I believe, three baby mamas. Um, it is just my personal opinion that while you're a provider, you're not providing a loving home for all of those children, unless you have them all living with you. And I don't know what the living situation is, but you're not providing a loving home for those children for you and their mothers. Like, you know, that is, that's why I just always find it funny how a lot of people who are not African, uh, who are not Caribbean or mainly African will say, oh, well, you know, in Africa, you know, Africans will have several wives. Yeah. And they'll all live with their wives and their children. They're not living separate lives from their children and their wives. If everybody is one man, one sound. One man, one sound. One man, one sound. One house. That's it. That's it. That's it. Ain't no child over there, child in this state, child in this country.
country, baby mama, no, no, tout le monde, ok. Hey, tout le monde, ok. Hey, oh. Everybody, one body. Everybody, one body. Everybody, one body. Tout le monde, ensemble, ok. That's it. Okay? And, and, and that's how they were living communally. So these children not only have their mothers, but then they have other mothers. It's a communal way of living. Okay. And it's always so funny to me because people who are not African will pick and choose what aspects of, of African culture they want to gravitate towards. That's a whole other conversation for a whole other day. But while he's a provider, yeah, like, but what is the home life? What are these kids missing out on because they don't all have one mother and one father together living under one roof, you know? But then also you have to think about, I, I think Jason Lee brought up a good point and it made me think about, you know, a couple months ago, back in September, I was seeing someone and this person was really, really nice. And when I look back though, I didn't live, I did not love, I did not allow this man to court me correctly. However, he did make a lot of statements and promises like, you know, like, hey, like when, when I'm in a relationship, I do this, that, and third. I take my woman on dates. I, I shower her with this. I shower her with that. And he did like exhibit a couple nice gestures. But when it came time to do all the things that he told me he would do. Should we be dating or should he be dating a woman? He didn't do it. I remember like asking like, so, you know, wh where's my date? Oh, don't ask me for no date. That's like a man asking you where my hug is at. But in the but this is the same person who would look me in my eyes and tell me like, I want to have a baby with you. Like, I love you. I want to have a baby with you. And it, it just made me realize that this person was love bombing me for what? So you can have access to my womb and then, and, and what? And what? Take me down to the courthouse and get child support from me? Like, what, like, what is it? Like, he was looking for something else. There was another intention there. Um, and he was not looking to really be with me. He was looking to drop some dick off. And I was just going to be one of those girls who had a baby as an ornament, which is why I'm telling you, like, I would rather, before I would ever be anybody's baby mama, I would rather go down to the clinic and say, let me go ahead and get, let me get, let me get number 57. Let me get that. Let me get number 57. Can we add a little bit to that? Yeah. All right. My baby father. Like, I would rather do that before I become some bum ass niggas baby mother. Absolutely not. And baby, while I've never been pregnant, I've never had an abortion, but I would kill that baby immediately. <laughs> I would delete that baby immediately. Immediately. Delete that baby. Immediately. Anyway, I wouldn't put myself in this condition to even be in that situation, but God forbid, I would delete that baby immediately. Delete. Delete. Immediately. Because no. Because no, because no, absolutely not. Um, and so what do you guys think about that? Like, I just feel like, yeah, like you might have money, but during Black Women's Black Women's Eclipse Month, having money does not substitute being a present father. And I think a lot of these men who have money think, oh, well, at least you're not with no bum nigga. At least you're not with no poor man. Like, I got a job, I got money. That's great but you're not present in your child's everyday life. And I think that a lot of men just really miss that point, which leads me to the final, final subject that I wanted to bring up. Have you guys seen this video on TikTok from Arnel Armand? Arnel Armand is um, one of the beauty gurus, girls that I've watched for years and years and years. I mean, she... Her, the Jackie Inas, the Tierra Monets, the Jenny Jenkins, like, you know, those are the girls that I, I watched on YouTube that taught me how to beat my face and taught me how to do my hair. Um, and I knew she had a baby recently. I don't, I don't follow her as closely as I used to, 
but she went on TikTok and she released this video and my jaw dropped. I typically don't get on camera looking like this, but there's a lot on my mind, so let's talk about it. So recently, there's been a lot of discourse about me being a single mother. At first, I want to start off by saying, if you're just not finding out this news, you're pretty late. However, I don't expect everyone to know me and my personal life. I know some of you guys are new to me. If you are, I'm a single mother. And to me personally, I have felt like a single mother since during my pregnancy in ways mentally prepared myself for this based on how things were going during the relationship but officially I became a single mother 10 days after I gave birth my child's father I would say abruptly ended the relationship and didn't give me an actual reason I didn't ask for one I, I saw that coming in fact I myself tried to end the relationship during the relationship. So it wasn't something I was upset about. I more so was upset about how I was treated afterwards. It's almost like because I didn't respond, I don't know if he wanted me to be like, oh my God, like, you know, don't do this. I had just given birth. I was mentally, emotionally, physically exhausted. I didn't have the capacity to chase after anyone, especially someone who had caused me so much stress and turmoil anyways, that it felt more like a relief to me. But because I didn't respond in the way that I believe he was hoping I responded, so much of what he did after the fact was, was what made me think like, yo, are you trying to make my life hard? Are you trying to ruin my life? There's so many details that have I, I have not shared in order to not just protect him, but to also to try to keep some peace. But it seems like no matter what I do, no matter how flexible I've been, no matter how chill I've been, there's no such thing as peace when dealing with someone who happens to be how he is. Now, there's been a lot of people talking about, oh, well, this is bound to happen. She barely knew him. I told you guys that. Now, if you did the math and you've been following me, you, you knew. But I shared that information with you guys. I have held myself accountable for that. I have said... I did not know him long enough before not just not even just getting pregnant by him before even sleeping with him getting into a relationship I did not know that man or his family long enough before making such a big decision like the one that I made and I have beat myself up about that time and time and time again like yo like how did you I, I don't have words for that what I will say is that being that the relationship I had just ended prior to that one was so bad I was in no space to be dating anybody and so when I did start dating him there were a lot of red flags that one I didn't even recognize red flags but two some of the ones that I did peep I ignored them because being honest you guys he loved bomb me so good it felt amazing it felt like wow like I remember feeling like it was too good to be true and thinking like Ugh, is this real? Like, I just, I, I was questioning it. And it turns out <laughs> that was my discernment that I also ignored and had good reason to question his actions because they weren't real. But I wanted them to be, and I believe that they were during that time. But to me, that's still no excuse to get pregnant that soon. However, since sharing this information, there's been many women who if you've shared your story with me, thank you for trusting me with it, that have expressed to me to not fixate so much on how long I did or didn't know him because the reality is some men change during pregnancy, after pregnancy. This could happen to anyone. This has happened to people who have known the man they've had a child with for years. And that's not to minimize my lack of responsibility for making that choice. But the reality is, I don't know how much I don't know how much responsibility I could take for it without completely taking all the blame while y'all forgetting like how some of these men actually are, how a lot of them are manipulative, how a lot of them will intentionally get women pregnant and trap them and switch up on them. It happens time and time again. And unfortunately, because of the platform that I have and because, I, you know, th that's the only thing I can think of. There's been a lot of people who... It's almost like I've been doing this for 10 years. Sometimes it feels like there's people just waiting for me to either fuck up or for something bad to happen to me so they could talk about it because it happens every single time. And right now there's people saying that I've said things that I've done things. So this is my karma. I want to let you know if you're one of those people, I want you to look in the mirror 
and acknowledge what a hypocrite you are because there's been a lot of people talking about, oh, well, she's made fun of this person and she's said this, and she's done this. Are you not doing the same thing? And so if I allegedly did these things, which I didn't, and my current circumstance is my karma for that, which I disagree with. I don't believe this is karma for anything. But if my situation, if this is my karma for doing these things that some of you guys are saying I'm doing, if you're doing the same thing that you're claiming I did, what happens when you get your karma? And it goes viral on social media. Would I then be the bad guy if I say, well, that's what they give for teasing me for being a single mom? No, I can't say that. Because since I have this platform, it's, oh, see, you're a messed up person. Stop looking for reasons not to like people. You don't have to like me. You don't need a reason for that. You don't. You, and you don't have to follow me either because there's a lot of people who are engaging in negative discourse about me, saying all these negative things about me, but you follow me. And I'm not forcing you to do that. If you're following me in hopes that you see me fail, not going to happen. If you're following me in hopes that you see me mess up, that probably will happen because guess what? Just because someone has a huge platform, it doesn't mean they're not a person. I'm not a robot. So yes, I'm going to mess up. I'm 29 years old. I don't know how much time I have on this earth, but I can guarantee you that if I live until I'm 80, from 29 to 80, you'll think I'm going to during that time. Do you not yourself there's so many people who follow influencers waiting for them to mess up looking for reasons to, to dislike them they don't even realize how much projection they're doing a lot of you guys project who you are onto me and that's the reality a lot of you guys project how you feel about yourself onto me there's so many people who talk about why well, i think she's actually really mean you're being mean right now stop stop projecting who you are onto me what do you want me to say do i have my mean moments yes are there are there opinions and thoughts that if I shared them, some of you guys would disagree with them? Absolutely. I'm very opinionated. I'm not getting on here for everyone to agree with me either. I do my makeup videos. I do my hair videos. I do my little fragrance reviews. I do my little vlogs and I keep it moving. I never told you guys to expect perfection out of me. The, the reason why I share this, the shitty things I experience, example, what I'm experiencing right now is to let you guys know that I don't have a perfect life. Everything isn't sweet all the time. You know what I mean? Like, if I could share the good, I could share the bad, and that's what I do. Another thing, there's so many people who express that influence, there's so many influences that are just fake, you know, like, they don't show the real them. I show the real me, and I get criticized for it. Like, <laughs> like, what do you want? What do you actually want? I feel like, with the internet, like, you guys don't give people any room to grow. Some of you guys do, though, and I appreciate y'all. But you know what I'm talking about, like, but, th but then you, you're like, oh, grow, 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 be this person, be perfect. Where's the f room to do that? Can I get some room to do it? Anyways, that's a whole nother rant. I'll talk more about this, you know, if you guys would like to hear just, just my experience, you know, I, I would like to share more, especially here on TikTok. But yes, I'm a single mother. I've been a single mother, like I said, for a while now. I think I've done a great job at navigating through this situation that I've put myself in and I'm gonna continue to do that. And if you're someone that is celebrating this fact or in support of the hate I'm receiving, I don't want you a part of my community because let's not forget, I'm still postpartum. I'm still going through a lot behind the scenes that I don't share online. I don't wanna get on here and see people talking about, well, that's what she gets. I'm going to block you. And I say that because there's a lot of people who complain about getting blocked. Why does she block me? She's so mean. You're mean. Stop projecting that onto me. And that concludes my TED Talk. So first of all, I didn't know that Arnell was a single mom, as in like, I, I, I never saw her get married or anything. So I have seen the baby here and there. So I assumed she was in a relationship. I feel like I had seen pictures of her with a guy a minute ago so i assumed she was in a relationship so that's just first and foremost like i didn't know that she you know was not in a relationship i didn't know that folks were sending a lot of hate her way for choosing you know to be a single mother um see this is what i fear for girls like Halle bailey or even ashanti you know what i mean and while Ashanti's engaged, praise God. That's why I'm like, okay, I, I, I need to see this wedding. I need to see this wedding. Um, Halle, Bailey, and DDG, I don't think I've ever heard of them being engaged, but look at the way he's behaving, you know? like. And so then you have, you know, Jason Lee, who just talked about guys just dropping that dick off, right? 
And then I see this video. I'm like, bruh, I don't know if God is sending me signs or he's telling me to give y'all signs. Because, baby, if it were me, baby, i press the lead. Just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, this is why we need contraception. We need contraception. We need abortion. We need all that stuff because, baby, we cannot. But at the end of the day, too, we should have discernment, to be honest. Like, abort, aborting a baby shouldn't be shouldn't be something that we, we're doing every time we're in a, No. Because some people do do abortions. Like, they take abortion pills. Like, they pop in mints. Like, it, come on now. During Black Women's Black Eclipse Month. No, ma'am. Um, but we should be having way more discernment about who to have children with. Right. And as I'm listening to her and I just kind of did my research, you know, this was a guy that she knew for about a month or two and, and she got pregnant and she did mention love bombing as well. And so, what does love bombing look like to y'all? Because as she said that, I was thinking about, again, my situation back in September. For a man that had never even took me on a date to look me in my eyes and tell me that he wanted to have children with me, I knew. That's when I knew. Mm. And literally, like, a week later, we, we, we were done. Like, literally. I just, when he said that, it's like my senses just got heightened. It was like, oh, no, like. All this stuff that you've been saying to me, all this lovey-dovey stuff, all this I love you, tell me you love me stuff, you were love bombing me. And you were doing that for what? To put a baby in me? To get to knock me up? To like lock me down and get and get what out of me? Like what was the intention, you know? And to manipulate me? Like I feel like a lot of times love bombers tell you things to disarm you. Um... And if you're somebody who has shared a lot of things with them, they are going to mirror all the things that you said that you want. Sometimes they will mirror who you are as a person, um, but they will morph themselves into what they think they need to be. And they will tell you everything that they think that they need to tell you in order to disarm you to get what they want out of you. And most of the time, it's not a relationship. Most of the time, it's to lock, it's to knock you up, just to knock you up, because that's what they do. Sometimes it's just to get to your money. Sometimes it's to get to have access to some to things that you have. You know, I have a, a story on here called the LA LA uh, the LA Swindler, and he did a lot of love bombing. But as soon as I started asking questions and seeing his reaction to different questions, it's like now I started to disarm him and, and I saw, oh, okay, this is he's not really who he says he is. He's not really interested in me for these things. For, for me, he's interested in me for what he thinks he can get from me, whether it be my money, which it was. That man was trying to get me to give him $10,000 because he knew I had it. Um, with this guy back in September, I... When I look back at it, I think this man wanted a place to stay because it was convenient. Like when I look back on our conversations, as I moved into my home, he suddenly, his lease was suddenly coming up and the, I love you, the, the, like just when I look back at it, man, this man needed a place to live. He wanted a place to live. And he felt he was going to come in my house and live with me. And that could have easily, I could have easily been Risa Tisa. Easily, easy, easy, easily. Because he was doing, like, I was paying him to do things around my house. But then he started doing things for free. He started, he was thoughtful. He would bring me flowers. You know, like, I cooked for him. Like, and this was somebody who had been doing stuff in my house since I was back in my apartment. But now that I was in my home... He was building bigger things for me and he was spending more time with me. And so our conversations just kind of like turned, like, you know, like they got more deeper, you know? And so anyway, um, the more and more I thought about it, the more I was like, yeah, the, this man was looking for a place to live. He could have easily been a legion, easily. And when I look at somebody like Arnell, it's like, 
a man knocking you up just to knock you up, that means he has access to you for the rest of your life, or at least for the next 18 years, he has access to you. And sometimes people will think, well, for what? Sometimes that's all a nigga want is access and they can work that access. Like there are a lot of just vultures out here who just want access to you, literally for whatever. She talked about being love bombed and I want to put that clip up now. Love bombing. Let's talk about it. And before I start, I'm getting a solo in later. So this cap is going to be gone the next time you hear from me. Now, if you've experienced love bombing before, you know it feels amazing. It feels incredible. And I think sometimes, especially depending on where we're at in our lives, we won't even recognize that that's what's happening to us. And even if intuitively we feel like it could be, you may not know the term for it. In your head, you may not be thinking, oh, this is love bombing, but you could be feeling like this is too good to be true. Sometimes, and I'll speak for myself, I feel like in the past, my ego has blurred my vision a little bit. In the sense where when someone has been love bombing me, I'm thinking, well, I, I'm pretty amazing. I'm really cool. Like you should be in love with me after a week. Now that I've matured, <laughs> now that I've learned some things, that's not normal. Do I believe in love at first sight? For some people, some people will tell you, nah, like I knew I loved my person the first time I met them and they're married 10 years later. But do I believe that when a man meets you, women can love bomb too, but we're talking about the men here. Do I believe that a man can meet you and he's just perfect. Um, he's just buying you all these gifts. He's emotionally love bombing you, seeming super emotionally available, like the man of your dream, telling you he loves you after knowing you for two weeks. Do I think that now that I know some things, is that a huge red flag? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Alyssa just sent me a video of someone doing a think piece about me. I wanna see them though, cause someone commented, she already took accountability. You and your wig are dismissed. Now I wanna see the wig. I wanna talk about how you can avoid love bombing to an extent, but first let me read this definition I found on Google. What is love bombing? Love bombing involves continuously bombing a relational partner with flattery, compliments, and affections. This attention can come in various forms, gifts, love-winded messages, social media interactions, and passionate declarations of love. However, love bombing isn't purely altruistic. Altruistic, well, that's a tongue twister. People use love bombing because they also want to feel praised and adored. Therefore, they will lavish their partners hoping that their partners will return the favor. So now that we know what love bombing is, I want to discuss ways in which I think you can avoid it, ways in which I will be avoiding it moving forward. That first way being not moving too fast. I have moved so quickly in previous relationships, you guys. Like, I'll dive head first. I'm like, look it, I'm all for it. And after a while, you have to learn, okay, maybe moving that quickly is just, it's just not good, okay? Like, you find yourself in similar situations after situations and you recognize, hey, how do all these situations start? It starts by me moving really quickly into them. Maybe moving forward, move a little slower. Take your time. There's no rush. Now, while you're taking your time, be selective with what you share. In the past, I have shared my previous experiences, my traumas with men that I was just getting to know, thinking that maybe if I share this side of me and get vulnerable, they will be more empathetic. That's not the case, y'all. <laughs> I don't I don't think that all men lack empathy. I will never think that because if I adapt that mentality, then I think that's all I'll attract. So I really try hard to not believe that all men are the same, but a lot of them do lack empathy. A lot of men are extremely narcissistic. And when they're narcissistic, telling them all that, it, it's, it's gonna do the opposite of what you're hoping for it to do. I can't speak for everybody, but when I've shared personal things and I've gotten vulnerable in the past, it was because I wanted them to maybe treat me like a person and almost like, damn, if I share this, like they'll have empathy and they won't do this to me. They'll, they'll end up being worse. What ends up happening is they'll love bomb you and they'll be the exact opposite of what you described. And they'll, they'll do what they need to do in order to get you to let your guard down. And the minute you're comfortable, the minute your guard's down, you find out not only is he just like the person you just left, he has, he's, he's worse. So don't give men a blueprint on how to 
act because that's what they're doing in the beginning. They're acting, not all of them, but the ones who are narcissistic or they're acting. Sometimes they'll mirror you. They'll mirror all your good qualities and hide their bad ones until they know they have you in a place where they want you after all the love bombing has had, got you a little dizzy. You're not seeing straight and then boom, this is who I really am. And, and trust me, I get it. Love bombing really does feel great. It feels amazing, especially when you've been in relationships where you haven't received much and you've been the giver. That's been my case. When I met someone who seemed to be the giver, who seemed to be able to provide for me this time because I've always provided for the people I've been with, I'm like, this feels too good to be true, but like, it feels really good. And I felt like maybe, maybe, I deserve this, so maybe I should embrace it. The thing with love bombing is it's never consistent. It's only like that in the beginning, and what they do is they show you this version of themselves in the beginning, and when you get used to that, they slowly start to take things away. There's a guy on TikTok that actually made a video breaking this down. It was kind of sick, but it made so much sense. But they slowly start taking it away, and then you're like, hey, why, why aren't you doing this? And they add a percentage back, and you don't even realize that like they're not they're not giving a hundred percent anymore. That's why it's important to heal before entering relationships. And I'm speaking to myself because that's where I went wrong too. Because when you're healed and you, you don't seek validation and love from men because you have mastered giving it to yourself, that when they start taking things away from you that you know you deserve, instead of settling for breadcrumbs, which is what they'll end up giving you, you'll walk away before you get yourself into some shit that now you stuck, okay? So that's my take on love bombing. And if you have other tips or advice on how to avoid love bombing, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Another way to avoid being love bombed or to avoid like putting yourself in a situation where you're having a baby for a man you don't know or whatever. Y'all need to be researching these men. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I look crazy because I'm about to like edit this and I don't have my lashes on. But y'all need to research these men. Like there are lawyers out here. There are investigators who will investigate these men for you. Uh, they will look up their credit. They will look up their finances. They will look up where they work at. at, work at. They will look up like where they, where, where they graduated from. Like y'all need to have your men research i'm doing that right now like just between you and i like you have to protect yourself especially as women the way us women right now we're making the money that we're making we have the careers that we have we cannot afford to link ourselves and possibly have children with men who ain't got no jobs who ain't got no place to stay like we we cannot be recent Tisa out here we cannot please have your man investigated please Please. I really like that Alyssa, I'm sorry, not Alyssa, that's her sister, but I really like that Arnell was sharing like her love bombing experience and how you can avoid being love bombed as well. But she kind of sheds a light on what I'm about to say, but she doesn't say this. I really feel like a lot of us love bomb back, right? I don't know what that term is. Somebody please let me know if there's a term for it, but I feel that a lot of us love bomb back. For instance, in my situation that I was saying, that man told me he loved me. I told him I loved him right back, right? Did I love him? No. I did not love that man. <laughs> I, I had not experienced anything to love about that man. You know, I liked his personality, but that man hadn't did anything with me gone any gone through anything with me done anything for me you know showed me anything okay uh i think another way we love bomb back like arnell was saying is they're moving fast and we move fast too right and i don't think moving fast is necessarily a bad thing especially i feel like when you, the older you get the wiser you get the more you know what you want the easier you can spot the things that you want um but when you're moving fast with no discernment or when you're moving fast and there's nothing to move fast for right it's kind of like you meet this you meet a guy you plan a baby with the man within two weeks and in that two weeks what have y'all done y'all went down to the olive garden twice
And I can tell you, and not saying I'm going, I'm going to have a baby with this man that I'm dating right now. But literally in our first week of dating, we went on four dates. And it wasn't just like down to the Olive Garden or down to the bar to get drinks. First date was church. First date was Easter service followed by brunch. Okay. Second date was a very, very special restaurant. And it was well thought out. The chef was Haitian. This man knows that I'm Haitian. We're kind of working on something together as well. And he thought things out so well. Okay. Third date was church again, followed up by brunch again. And then fourth date was Sheila's birthday dinner. And he met all my friends, like my entire group of friends. Like in that first week, we did so much together. We had so many serious conversations, whether it was pleasant, whether it was unpleasant. And I saw like different sides of him all in four, all in, in one week, right? And I'm not saying that after that one week, I'm going to marry this man, right? But there was a lot that happened in that first week. Do you get what I'm saying? And so, so much action, so like everything is well thought out. This man has planned this. He's done that. Like, I ain't got to worry about nothing. He's sitting in a black car. He doing this. He do like, he's taking a lot of initiative and making a lot of effort, right? I think a lot of times I see people get love bombed by men who are just dropping dick off and saying, I love you. And the dick feels so good. It feels like you're in love. But outside of him dropping dick off, there's nothing else happening. It's phone calls, not even phone calls. It's text messages. It's no real conversations. It's Netflix, chilling, dick riding. I love you. No. No. Do you get what I'm saying? So I would have loved for her to tell me, well, what was the love bombing? But I think... The internet is not a safe place, so I get why she wouldn't share it. <laughs> I get why she wouldn't share it, and she probably never will, um, because the internet is just not a safe place. But love bombing to me, I think that's maybe that's maybe that's a whole other like episode of just a couple things that we need to talk about because I, I feel like love bombing, what love bombing may look like to you, it might not be what it looks like to me. And, um, I don't, sometimes I, I, I actually believe like how she said too, I believe sometimes you meet someone and you just know, sometimes you meet somebody and you just know some people have met someone and, you know, had sex within the first couple of couple days and they, they get, they, they're married for years. I have two friends who are married right now who had sex with their partners the first week and they've been married for years. Right. Some people might look at that. Oh, that's love bombing. You know what I mean? But Sometimes you just know. And when I look at their stories, it's kind of similar to my...